welcome to Old Time Tuesdays once again. Um, I've got something now that I probably very, very plain, simple thing that I treasure above anything I own, really, um, or in the little collection I have. Um, I worked with a chap with heavy horses, and he was a true horseman, a master at his job, a true master. Very, very quiet man, tiny little fella come to that, quite broad, but he weren't very tall. And uh, I see him drive a team of eight shires, nobody walking up the side or anything like that, or holding them and do it entirely on his own, and have them all stepping out and going well, and he could reverse them and do figure of eight, do anything he wanted with me. He was really good coachman. And like, a, you know, when I was a nipper, I had a chip on my shoulder and would never listen. But he did take me under his wing and um, taught me a lot. He did. If I'd have had a, you know, a bit more receptive, I'd have, you know, I wish I could turn the clock back because the man was definitely a master. Anyway, we was out one day um, with a young horse and then we'd do some deliveries, you know, um, with the horses. Like when I worked there, there was 32 working horses, a lot of horses. So... We used to go out, and he was on the show side, you know, so going all the shows, so we'd have all the black horses, white feet, big shires, and he would um, he would do that side. But winter time, we used to school the young horse on and take them round for their first trip round, doing a few deliveries. And we used to come back across the common, and he'd say, just hold up here for a minute, very quiet spoken man, and he'd go off with a little basket, you know, like a little lady's basket, which, you know, so he walk across there and he'd pick up all these herbs and plants and stuff. The only two things I can really remember is comfrey, that plant. He'd have a good few leaves of that. And dandelion stalks. Now, I don't know, but that's what he picked up, along with lots of other things. Then we'd move on a bit. I'd just walk along slowly and he'd pick the hedgerows. He'd take certain things. And he'd only do this a certain time of the year. And in the winter time, you know, was when he would do this. Um you know, late, late uh, coming in October, November time, you know, that sort of time he'd be doing it. So although you get some nice days, things was dying back. So I don't know whether, you know, that had any pussy, because I never, like a fool, never, and I mean a fool, never listened, couldn't listen, you know, headstrong youngster. Anyway, when we got back, I was a great big basket of this stuff. He'd get back up on a dray and I'd be driving maybe. He'd let me drive a lot. You know, when he even shouldn't have done, he'd let me drive. And we'd get back in and then we'd put the horses, or I'd put the horses away, you know, brush them down, put them away, feed them in. And um, he would then have all this stuff and I'd have to grind it up with a pestle and mortar. And then he'd used to get it and mix it with flour and roll it in, into balls about as big as a gobstopper, you know, like a lolly on a stick, that type of thing. Um, you know, a round ball, in other words. So he'd do that, and then he'd dry them on the pot-bellied stove we had in the harness room to keep the place warm. He would put them on there. So, and then he'd put them in a big sweet jar or candy jar, you know, people call it in America a lot, that's a big lid on it. And he'd have the, all these made up. And the other thing he used to put in was tobacco. You get a big block of tobacco, you know, squashed into a, like a little brick, and you cut it off with a, or people that smoked a pipe, or would have cut it off with a knife, and they would, um, yeah, they would uh, then shred it all up. It'd all come apart, a bit like a bale of hay, really. And he'd mix all that up. That was my job. He'd roll it in these balls and put it in. And he was a lovely man to me when I weren't the easiest to get on with being a nipper, you know, and a chip on your shoulder and the world owed you everything and a silly sort of attitude. So anyway, um, I said, what are we doing these for? He said, oh, we'd, I'll show you later on, boy, you know, we'll have a look and when they dry out, we'll be using them on the horses and like that. Very quiet spoke with me. Anyway, he had this, uh, this thing here, which um, I want to show you. Now I know that's just a piece of wood to a lot of people, but that fella gave that to me and it would be, uh, you know, a lovely, lovely thing to own. You know, when a man of his caliber, his ability as horseman would 
give me that. Um, there's no money in the world that could buy it, you know. And they'd be hard to find one, I should think. But what it was for, um, I'm sorry if I get a bit emotional about that, but like the man was a proper master and I was an idiot and I should have listened more. Youngster, I suppose. So, there you are. So, it's for giving horse a ball. So, a ball being a tablet. Everything was done orally back in them days. We didn't have injections. Well, they did, but I mean, they weren't, they was only developing that type of thing. So, everything was done orally or, you know, um, bandages and that type of stuff to, you know, to help all seal the horse or whatever. So, what this was for was giving a ball. Now, I haven't got a ball. Um, to show you, but what I've got is something that will fit in the end there. So you'd put your tablet, if you like, then or pill in there, and you'd put it. I'd hold the horse steady, and he'd put it gently up the horse's mouth like that. You know, great big shire horse up there. Put it gently like that. Talk to the horse like that. Get it right back as far as he could, and then he and straight down the throat it would go. So the horse didn't choke on it. And that would be, and within a very short space of time, you've never seen worms come out horse like it. There would be every sort of worm, especially new horses coming in, youngsters that have been out to grass. Even our horses went away for a six weeks holiday to grass, you know, and they would get, and you pick up worms, but I mean, they would pick up worms, all that, but I mean, that's what they would do. And uh, that would be the wormer. Now, the only thing he paid for was a block of tobacco, you know, about this big. And that wormed every sort of worm there was, and their horses was in fabulous condition. And he's, uh, he was a lovely, lovely man. And he gave me that, and that means the world to me, you know, because I didn't deserve it, not the way I was, you know, arrogant and what's it, and just the way you are when you're a kid in your upbringing I suppose but um, yeah so give me that and uh, I don't even know what they call them but it's for giving horse a ball i.e. a tablet yeah it's a lovely thing <laughs>